So one thing that's very important whenever you're dealing with something controversial is to provide context. So in addition to the introduction video that I made, I also thought I should make one that explains a little bit more about the videos that will you'll be seeing, right? And this is just important to remember, I, um, I need to practice in a sense what I preach. I'm telling you, you need to have context, you need to explain things clearly in order to avoid controversy when you can. Um, so I need to do the same thing. So just to kind of briefly go through the videos, the first series is mostly focusing on World War II, right? So we've got one that's talking about the Enola Gay incident. Um, there's one of Japanese Americans visiting a World War II, uh, they call it incarceration camp. Um, I, I think at the time they were called relocation camps or something like that. I, I'm comfortable with the word concentration camp. Um, in any case, it's looking, it's these Japanese Americans and their reactions to visiting Manzanar. Then there is a clip of the Yasukuni Museum this is in Japanese. I don't expect you to actually understand what they're talking about, but I just wanted you to see the inside of the museum. Normally I would just have lots of pictures and I would show it to you, but it's actually hard to get pictures of the museum. You're not supposed to take pictures inside. They want to control the information, I believe, that's coming out, so they don't want you taking pictures. Um, the next clip is uh, about, is it's actually a Korean news channel, English news channel from Korea, talking about a U.S. reaction to a Yasukuni shrine visit by Japan's defense minister. So that's trying to show you how the politics and the history are often connected. And then the last video clip is interesting. I think it's, it's actually by Stars and Stripes, which is an American military journalism group. But they're just interviewing Westerners who are visiting Yasukuni Shrine and the Yushukan Museum that's a part of that shrine and just getting their kind of uh, input on how they're reacting, right? And that's important to think about how your audience reacts to a particular exhibit. The, the next few videos are looking at how monuments came to be established, devoted to the Confederacy. And these three take rather different approaches. Uh, one is a more kind of modern, popular one made particularly from YouTube. Uh, the other two are clips from more serious documentaries, and they both kind of give different explanations and are focusing on, on different aspects of things. And, and I think they show how it's important to look at multiple sources because for various reasons, um, some which are, there's no problem with them. And I, uh, they, they leave out different information, and that's I'm not criticizing them or saying there was bad intent behind that. Um, the fact is people answer questions differently depending on the context they're in, and so that's why it's good to be familiar with a lot of sources, but they're looking at the, the, these contain different explanations for why uh, memorial Confederate memorials were established, so it's good to know that, and there's a response question uh, devoted to that issue. There are a lot of clips that, that, don't worry though, they're all rather short about different ways people have dealt with c the Confederate flags um, and Confederate monuments. And these are meant to kind of show you, um, they're often kind of debates and they're from different perspectives. Uh, some of them are not even, uh, a lot of them are news programs. Some are like PBS and, and others are network, but there's also CBC, which is the uh, Canadian channel. So you're looking at how these Canadians are kind of, kind of understanding these things as well. And I think that's that's kind of interesting. It's just good to see these different, lots of different perspectives and to see the connection between politics and, and recent events. Um, I mean, it, it talks about the uh, Charleston shooting, uh, that, that tragic event, um, and so forth. So it's uh, important to kind of understand that. Uh, and the historical questions often are shaped by public of, or uh, contemporary events. Um, the last clip I want to note uh, I think it's very interesting, so I want to include it, and it includes very important perspective. It's that Civil War reenactors weigh in on Confederate monuments controversy. Um, it's produced by the Voice of America, which is kind of this American uh, news service aimed at an international audience. So that's why the um, the narrator uh, is speaking English, but you can tell she's not a native English speaker. Uh, she's, uh, I believe, Eastern European. But I think it's very interesting to include that, right? How do we as Americans, we're used to, Americans often think about how we talk to ourselves. But um, how do we talk to other people about our history, especially this kind of difficult history? And I think that's an important perspective for you to, to look at. Um, I'm of the opinion that these video clips I'm making you watch are very exhausting and emotionally difficult. Uh, at least that's how I felt when I watched them. Um, dealing with controversial issues is, is difficult and I think stressful, both because people are arguing, but also a lot of times you can kind of see multiple perspectives. And there's a problem that you can't make everyone happy even though you would like to. Right. It's not, it's typically I can't just say, oh, yeah, you're wrong and I'm just going to do things my way because I'm right. Even if I believe I'm right and that you're incorrect, I can kind of understand your motives and I can see that, hey, you know, this isn't a bad person. We just disagree. And, and that thing's I, I find it very stressful and very difficult. That's why I find this a, a, a difficult one to deal with. 
So I wanted to, in the last bit to, to talk about things that were um, attempts to deal with controversy. And I think in, I, I, I can't say they're 100% successful, but I think they did a reasonably good job. And I, I'm, of course, I could be wrong, and you're welcome to share your opinion in your response paper. But basically, there's two episodes of Liberty Kids. I don't know if you're too old for Liberty Kids, but this was a, uh, an, a fairly decent PBS cartoon that was put out about the American Revolution. And I have two clip, two, uh, sorry, not clips, two episodes. Each one's about 20 minutes. Um, one is about, uh, it's called Liberty or Death, and is about the um, uh, Declaration of Independence, but it also touches on issues of slavery. And, uh, you know, we just talked about these issues of, of Confederate memorials and things like that. Well, th this is how the Liberty Kids is going to deal with this, with the issue of slavery, right? Which is in the background of dealing anytime you talk about the Confederacy. A Conflict in the South also uh, deals with the issue of slavery in the background as well. So I thought those were both uh, kind of good ones to include. And uh, I think that will be of, uh, of some interest. I think it's entertaining, but it also shows you how people have tried to deal with these issues and present them to kids, right? How do you present these complicated, controversial issues to children? And I think this is a, a good way to do this. And I do think this is, in a sense, a kind of public history. And uh, I can't be sure of what will happen in the future, but my guess is that public history will more and more include uh, animation and um, documentaries and things like that. Uh, especially as, in a sense, the cost to produce these things is going down, right? More and more, you, you can kind of produce these yourselves. The, there is, a, I think, some problems, though, with the way that these deal, especially with Thomas Jefferson. And so I included um, an epic rap battle between Thomas Jefferson and Frederick Douglass. This is a series that I think is really neat, but I have a hard time including because, um, I mean, it really is an epic, it is an epic rap battle between historical figures. Oftentimes, uh, I mean, sometimes they're a little bit inaccurate, but for the most part, they're, they're pretty accurate. The, the problem is um, they, they've got a lot of swearing, and I, I'm not a, I don't, not a big fan of, of swearing or profanity, especially in the classroom. I can sometimes overlook it for pedagogical purposes, but sometimes the swearing is, uh, it's, I think, a little bit in, insulting or demeaning, and I, I, I have some trouble with that. So what I've done is I've edited out a bit, what um, what I think were some some things that aren't necessary for understanding the uh, the the points being made here, um, and I've uploaded the video itself. If you want to watch the whole video, just do a do a search for it, and you can hear the whole thing. Um, like I said, I I cut out some things that I thought were um, unnecessarily uh, suggestive. I, I shouldn't even say suggestive, just just sexually aggressive, and I was uncomfortable with it, so I cut it out. Uh, so if you want to see the whole thing, though, you can you can watch it. Um, but what I think is important, though, is it points to some problems um, in the Liberty Kids presentation, right? It, it, it points out some problems with Thomas Jefferson that the Liberty Kids kind of dances around. And the question is, okay, should Liberty Kids have dealt with this or was this more appropriate for a um, epic rap battles venue? And those are the kinds of things you have to think about. You have to be prudent. You have to be careful about what you discuss, discuss and, and, and how you deal with controversy. But that should hopefully help you with these videos and you'll, you'll kind of understand. And in particular, though, just as an aside, depending, I don't know where you're watching these. I know some people have jobs where they can watch videos and, and stuff like that. Um, that one is not safe for work. The Thomas Jefferson and Frederick Douglass do not watch that on the job. Uh, the other ones I think are safe for work, depending on where you're working at.